Hey y'all, Mikey here with a little programming note, quote unquote. Um, this is going to be part one of two parts because this is my first time doing downtime. We kind of just rolled with it. We were having so much fun. We kind of ended up recording uh, the length of two episodes for one episode. So uh, we decided to split it up and this will end very abruptly, which I apologize for. I just felt like it was a good time to cut it um, before we got into more stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoy and thank you for listening. Hey everybody, welcome back to Quested. I am painfully aware of reality. I'm Mikey Malakowski, and I'm here with... <laughs> David Ramos, your little soup boy. <laughs> <laughs> and also... William Rafter, a lucid amalgamation of subconscious thought. <laughs> you just pulled that out of nowhere? <laughs> Jesus. And last but never least... <laughs> uh, Nathan English, uh, Wayne Brady in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Sing something, Wayne. Just like I remember. That's all I got so far. <laughs> That's just the beginning. So how's everybody doing, huh? We're doing great. Could be better. <laughs> oh, I said that last episode. Yeah. Um, so still weird. hoping things get a lot better, but it hasn't significantly got worse yet. Good. I'm That's at a good. constant state of just gray. I'm so hyped up on caffeine right now. I'm getting there. I feel like I'm gonna jump out of my skin. <laughs> we should do you one are vibrating like that monster. Yeah, I feel girl. like I'm. Vibrating. When we start the Patreon, we should do like a side episode where we all. Uh, no, we should start a series of side episodes where we take a really hardcore drug each time. Like each episode is different. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the first get, one, get it's like maybe we'll start off with like Adderall, and like the, by like the tenth one, it's like just molly and then like by like the end it's like some drug where we're like not even speaking like fuck yeah i can't handle like a normal cup of coffee what makes you think i'm gonna be good on adderall brother it's not about us it's about the audience and <laughs> oh, if that's they fair. see me induce a panic attack i'll do it for the clicks like, <laughs> like, I, I have no shame in feel like fucking in theory, up my own nervous system in theory that like inducing a panic attack for entertainment would be like oh that'd be like crazy because you get to like really see into my psyche but then it would just be like i'd be silent <laughs> like i'd just be like <laughs> the one we do like yeah. yeah we just do like fucking acid and like we're like <laughs> you like hit record and then we just sit for like an hour and you hit stop recording and you're like, we, we're like, that was good, whatever. And then we listen back. We didn't speak the entire <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, I was speaking telepathically to you guys the whole time. We just all stared at each other drooling. And yeah, like we, like we do weed. <laughs> dude, okay, no, chill, we dude. can't. Geez, okay, we got to calm, calm down with that calm shit. Calm the fuck down, Will. One step at a time. That was, that's my bad. Yeah, dude. Too, I'm too sorry. fucking far. The Patreon bro. money, when that flows in, will be funding every bad habit I will start to form once I make any oh, side I income. I will become a different person once we start making money. <laughs> if I could make $20 off of this, that will change my ego. I will become a total asshole. I'm going to go to Chili's and be like, don't you know who I am? <laughs> in like a fucking button up shirt with a big ass collar. You don't yeah. listen to my podcast. Boot cut jeans. Like, what the fuck? I go dress to- like Napoleon Bonaparte just to go to like fucking Walmart. Go to Red Lobster. Bring me Eugene Crab. <laughs> Bring me the crab. <laughs> Bring the crab. They're like, what is that? Bring me the lobster at Red Lobster. <laughs> Bring me Larry. <laughs> <laughs> um, How are we feeling about a recap, huh? Let's do it. No. All right. Yeah, we just won't. Okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything you tell me to do, I'll just do the bit. I'm taking over the show. I'm the director of the show. <laughs> hey, maybe, yeah, maybe don't do that. I'm just like, <laughs> fucking. Like, just, yeah, okay. Uh, skip this part. They don't want this part. <laughs> All right. Um, last episode was a fucking doozy, by the way. If you didn't listen to it. Uh... Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the director's mad again. Um, our executive producer is like really on our ass right now. He's yeah. fucking, he's pitching a fit in the corner. Have any celebrities died recently <laughs> that we should say something about? Oh, uh, William Hurt just died. Rest in peace. R.I.P. I don't know who that is. Uh, the rep. Thaddeus Ross. Uh, no fucking idea who that uh, is. From Hulk. Giannis Antetokounmpo. He played. <laughs> no fucking, I would cry. No, he played Giannis Antetokounmpo <laughs> in, um, <laughs> 
in Space the NHL. Jam? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Space, they couldn't get Giannis, so they got... <laughs> they got this movie. old white guy to Martin be... Shkreli. <laughs> they got Martin yeah. Shkreli. They fucking ripped him out of a prison. Yo, <laughs> wait, are we talking about the general from Hulk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 30 Damn. likes. Once we hit 30 subs, we're gonna um, break Martin Shkreli out of jail and... <laughs> <laughs> kill him in the town square. Ritualistically <laughs> kill him. Ritualistically kill him. And get that Wu- below the equator. Who has that Wu Tang album now? I think someone like someone bought it from him. <sighs> Fucking hell! I know the government had it. Like the government seized it, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Wait, the government owns this Wu Tang album?" Biden's but then they like, I think they auctioned it, and then someone else bought it. God Sorry, man. go ahead. I'm not yeah. Okay. Making <laughs> this yeah. Terrible. Okay. Last time on Quested. The gang found themselves knee-deep in the machinations of Father Cromwell at Rave Tormund's soiree. Isaac returned to the Silver Spires and developed a plan with Queen Sorathelion on the fly, while Blint and Glitch lived out their true calling, being royal plumbers. After a quick costume change and a bevy of broken toilets, they managed to swap the queen out for the decoy and safeguard her for a time. Time came for the movers and shakers of Crescent City to hit the dance floor, and during the dance, Cromwell's plan began. Vigilant whelps armed with crossbows unloaded and Oberyn pinned Cromwell down. The gang swiftly dealt with the attack, Blint besting Norm, Glitch threatening Cromwell, and Isaac coming in clutch with a command spell levied at Cromwell himself to surrender. It was then revealed he never planned to survive, and was going to be a martyr. Death by Arcane Turret. (coughs) Sora called for Isaac, being pursued by the figure in Darkplate, and with Oberyn in tow, they rescued the queen, but not before Oberyn was stabbed through the chest, figure having vanished. Realizing he was beat, Cromwell begged for death and, and begged for death as the villa would come after him. Glitch asks simply, "Who is the villa?" And that is where we find ourselves. Bl- uh, Blint, you hear Glitch, uh, sword pointed at the now sunken in Cromwell as his number reached zero. Uh, you hear Glitch ask, "Who's the villa?" And you just you just felled Norm, punched his head in. Not dead, but uh, across the, the the darkness of the party, mm-hmm. you hear Glitch say, "Who's the villa?" Who's the villa? Shall I explain, or is it supposed to be kind of like an open-ended thing? I mean, what would Blint do in this moment? I guess is what I'm asking. Because this is kind of huge for Blint, and I didn't want to rob you of this with the last episode's ending. You're just robbing me left and right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm a little pickpocket. What would he say? Uh, back home, we have the key close. And those dumb motherfuckers believe that within the key close, there's the Aston Villa. And no one knows what it really is. They, they there's, there's hearsay. They, they, they make up their own, their own, what they picture. And they sacrifice things to it. And I don't really understand it, but they think there's like a a big dream mansion of higher religious people in there, but no one really knows for sure what goes on. It's bullshit. (laughs) Glitch is looking around and he just turns around. He's like, "Uh, oh, uh, are you are you talking to me? (laughs) Uh, Oh, no, I was just. Thinking out loud. No, 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 I was listening. I just, it was just kind of random. You just kind of like started with that. <laughs> oh, uh, he just walks away. He walks away just like, he's like, I swear. Um, Blint, you notice that Cromwell's body is like, def- like his body mass was like, is being sucked out of him. <laughs> oh, baby, you we, said, we are children. You, what you are. say? <laughs> um, wait, what did you say? Hang on, wait, who? <laughs> um, and yeah, glitch. As you're on top of him, like as he's manacled, you like feel <laughs> you feel him like getting like like sh- like shrinking basically, and you feel his like there's escaping bones. his tiny flesh body. <laughs> his tiny flesh. Body. Um, do you want to make an uh medicine or an insight check on him to yeah. see what's going on? That's gonna be a twenty-one for me. Oh, baby. medicine check. Um, so you, uh, you would know. Basically, this is like this is what it looks like if someone, someone's like vitality was ripped from them. He has like one HP, and it faded so quickly. Oh my goodness! So you see in this dark expanse of this party room, with the uh, the illusory walls now gone, um, 
you watch as this little, like, uh, opalescent light escapes Cromwell's, like, mouth. Mm-hmm. As he is, like, fucking decaying in front of you, basically. He's not dead, but it's like, he looks gaunt, and you can see, like, the bones underneath him, underneath his skin. And, uh, this opalescent light leaves his body and trails outside hanging above the chandeliers trails outside uh and you assume takes to the sky well i've never seen that happen with a living thing before i've only seen that when i'm off the what is it called the <laughs> bear <Mare> weed <laughs> yeah uh he, he's still high from when he stole that lunch from me he's you, like you wu-tanged it on the yeah you fucking swallowed it did you wait you guys saw that too or yeah is that is that normal <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. <laughs> and with that, we transition four floors up to uh, Sora Athelion and Isaac Yumero over the body of Oberyn Athelion having been stabbed through with the biggest buster blade you've seen. Yeah. Um, your hands are on him. Both of you are like right, like right next to each other, knelt down hands on his chest. Sora looks at you and goes, do you have something? Yeah, yeah. I, I have something that'll help, I think. Uh, you can look at her. She's just in shock. There's no tears. It's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I think Isaac is like fucking pale as a ghost right now. Yeah, this guy's like your, I don't know, I mean, basically like your son. Yeah, kind of. I Isaac looks at him like that. All right, all right kid. Um... Hold on. And, there, and, and he, it's gotten to the point where blood has pooled underneath him and is like, you're just kneeling in his blood at this point. Yeah, I think Isaac's vision is even like blurring. Hands are shaking as he's like, uh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds. Uh, this is, you go into like first person for a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like a first person <laughs> point of view. My vision's blurring, like hands covered in blood. Mm-hmm. Fucking... And there is a, there's a, I didn't explain very well in the first one, but when the, when the arcane turret shot at the spire, it blew a hole in this floor. Okay. Um, and you assume the dark figure dipped out of that hole as well? Because you've seen him poofing around? Yeah. That madman. But let's see what, uh, let's see what, how much you heal him for. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Is it... That'll be eleven. Horny. We we have <laughs> horny. I need to like I need to like change the way I speak. On sexy mic. baby that's shit. Sick as fuck. Yo, that's baby shit. <laughs> Yo, baby shit. Um, no, um, the amazing. Uh, uh, what does it look like when Isaac casts cure wounds? We know what it looks like when Glitch does it, but what does it look like when Isaac does it? Hmm. You watch as like the fibers of his skin are like cooling over but what does your magic look like i'd say it's like kind of a uh gentle like uh greenish kind of like yellow glow uh like super soft nothing like flashy hell yeah i love that calming light and just you, like covering his palms and you look at him and you like there's a second that goes by and you his chest like there wasn't any movement you know what I mean he wasn't like breathing yeah. breathing um very labored and you he doesn't wake up but you watch as his chest lifts and compresses with breath you stabilized him oh fuck <laughs> and it. the queen fully like sits down like back against the wall now and is just like thank you yeah, yeah. we uh um, I don't even I'm not even thinking straight let's get him somewhere to the infirmary <laughs> yeah I try to pick him up but he's 100% heavier than me and <laughs> yeah. I have zero strength <laughs> he's wearing full like heavy armor and yeah I'm like holy fuck <laughs> and she tries to but she's you know she's like a wizard she doesn't do that shit <laughs> um so uh like she you like she goes to the the precipice of this floor and looks over the stairway and and screams for help for medical help um which is going to be sorely needed in this event as yeah. uh the lights come on 
in this hallway. This is where we're going to get to kind of... It, unless anyone has shit they want to say um, um, for this moment. I was going to start. Are we like... Can we see them? Oh, oh yeah. I was going to say. Uh, so the lights come on. Um, the chandeliers are lit again. Um, and you watch as most of the people that were around, like, around, like uh, not in the center of the dance floor, were injured and some dead. Um, you see Lady Vera, uh, this older woman. She's the Antropican uh, person in the Quadrumvirate. Isaac would know her as kind of slimy, a little snaky. Um, uh, she she has like these these jowls that like hang lower and this like uh like grayish white hair that's like super long and like pulled back in like a very tight bun. Um, and wears like over the top finery. Uh, she lays on the ground, someone trying to tend to her, but it's not looking well. She looks like she has already passed. Um. You see Rafe Torman has a couple uh, arrows in the arm, but otherwise is, like, okay. Uh, you watch as the moon scars, uh, Tulip, now with her violin out, <laughs> um, uh, kind of shielded herself and put, put her and Hugo in front of the decoy queen. Um, Hugo is her dad. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't describe Tulip uh, in the old, the old brain, um, but she is this, uh, very tall, like almost like Goliaths are like eight feet tall. Right. So she's this like, um, eight foot tall, like Goliath woman has the similar markings to Hugo, which are just like, they go from the chin to the cheek, uh, up to the top of her head where she has this nice, uh, bluish like bob of hair that is like kind of messy. And she wears like this, like really like really fucking fancy like leather duster kind of thing that goes like uh maybe just past um just past her butt and has like this really like intricate gold trim on it um she's like i described her as a power bard she is <laughs> the court mage uh on the quadrumvirate and of the silver spires and she's just like she was you're, you assume just got done like playing a little tune but in like the fog of war you couldn't really make it out mm -hmm. um to heal some people um and the decoy is completely fine uh guarded by hugo moonscar who managed to not sustain any damage um and uh there's a couple nobles that you wouldn't really recognize you guys wouldn't recognize isaac might might have like seen them in passing mm. who live around the silver spires who uh are st gravely injured um and not gravely injured is lord Terravin in the corner of the room by the now crushed uh <laughs> vigilance <laughs> and he's just like uh, uh, uh. blint get that slimy fucker <laughs> he, 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 like you guys are in earshot so he like hears you guys say that looks at you guys and like he's fully like ass to the ground knees up like a little kid <laughs> and, and, like uh, palms on the pavement it's just like oh, 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 oh lord and he like tries to <laughs> scramble up you guys get to him without question do we actually want to kill this fucker we don't have to kill him we just need to um apprehend yeah apprehend him because he was he was in league with Cromwell right oh 100% yeah 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 Isaac has physical proof on him. Yeah. So, are we we're like grabbing him right now? Yeah. yeah you, okay. you just what do you do? You're the one that's grabbing him. So, I, <laughs> you see the uh, this is how this is how I want the listeners to picture this. Okay. You see Blint running across. Is it like a ballroom kind of? Yeah, thing? yeah. It's like he's like running across the ballroom and it's motion tracked on his head. So he's like, <laughs> 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 and he like runs up and grabs him like around the arms and like linebacker tackles this dude to the ground <laughs> and he like holds his arm and he like leans in here and he goes no one disrespects women in front of me and he gives him like an elbow to the neck <laughs> so that elbow to the neck with your your strong ass arms like fully knocks him out <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh, fuck. he just lets out like a him. like a fucking uh, <laughs> like a little whimper he's just like oh <laughs> and then he, he's, he's out <laughs> limp in your arms like three seconds after he's knocked out Glitch just runs up and goes, yeah, kicks him in the leg. <laughs> and he, that wakes him up and he's like, oh, oh, I've never been in such physical danger. <laughs> <laughs> he's just stating that he's in physical danger. Uh, they're harassing me. They're harassing me. And then Bullying goes, shut up. And just like, like pushes him into the ground again. 
his yeah. head. Yeah, he he is out again knocked unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> We're just bringing him back to life and <laughs> knocking Smelling him out salt. over and over. <laughs> um, uh, a bunch of Crescent Guard rush up the stairs from the guardhouse uh, to grab Oberyn. Um, who like immediately needs help? Um, it's kind of just there's like a bunch of random nobles like the the kid that tulip was dancing with originally has like a fucking arrow in his side (laughs) and these people are nobles but they're they're sturdier than everyone gives them credit for so no one's like the people that have died are dead you know what i mean right i just like is there anyone because i you want to heal somebody yeah i was gonna say i just kind of want to like dress the wounds of the people that are like fucked up okay yeah you go up to the noble boy or like i say boy he's like a teenager that Tulip, like, pity danced with when Oberyn was, like, busy. Um, and, uh, you go up to him and you, do you just heal him? Heal yeah, him? I'm just, like, I'm, like, talking to him, trying to, like, distract him, and I'm, like, you got some nice moves out there. He's got, like, this long, swoopy kind of Bieber hair, uh, is wearing, like, this, like, pale blue, uh, little tunic thing, and he's just, like, holy shit, man. I mean, your tunic looks really nice, but maybe you should get a haircut. And then I just <laughs> yank the arrow out, and I immediately, like, <laughs> start killing it. Tears down his face. I'm like, you're doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> and he's like, don't make me look stupid in front of Tulip, she's so hot. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I just pulled an arrow out of you. You look pretty fucking badass right now. <laughs> he's like, thank you. And he, like, goes a little, like, limp, like, with blood yeah. loss, and, like, puts his hand on your shoulder. I'm like, you're gonna have a sick battle scar after that. Oh, my God, yeah. Girls love battle scars. They do? That's sick. It's so fucking sick. Oh, dude, the, the dudes are never gonna... Uh, and, and you just, but I want Blint to walk up and he's like, yeah, look at the scar I got. And it's the patch of no hair he had from ripping his, <laughs> the badge off. He's like, I yeah, I was like fighting a lot of people. And yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. I picture actually. you're holding Teravin like a backpack, like a, like, a, like a fucking, I don't even know, like a stack of books in, like, in school. Yeah, I'm like dragging him around by his, his like neck. Like he's just yeah. like dragging his, his limp body around. Um, and uh, you see his kids uh, did arrive at the party. They're fine. Uh, and yeah, Tulip puts her hand on your shoulder glitch. And uh, I picture her as having kind of, she grew up in Arsene and her dad has this very uh, regional kind of like uh, Irish British kind of twang to it. But I, I can't mix that and also dilute it to have like a traditional American English in a way that, like, someone who's, like, lived in multiple places has. So just, I'm going to do my normal voice as Tulip, mm-hmm. but just picture she has a really cool, unique accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and <laughs> just okay. a little thing for the, the fucking, the crew. Um, and uh, she puts her hand on your shoulder, and uh, she goes, Well, um, I've never seen anything like you before. And that's a compliment, trust me. Well, I've never seen anything like you before either. Well. Wow. My name's Tulip, and she puts her hand out for a handshake. My name's Glitch, and my hand's, like, significantly smaller (laughs) than hers. And she shakes your hand, and she's, like, (laughs) giving you a very genuine, like, curious smile. Um, And she's like, well, I think we could do some good work together. That sounds good to me. Are you going to help me heal these people? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Also, hi. And, like, waves to you. This is Tulip Moonscar, the power bard of the (laughs) Quadrumber. The power bard. (laughs) And she, like, (laughs) waves at you. This is the first time you're around someone that's, like, taller than you oh they're taller than me yeah the moon scars are goliaths so they're like they're big as fuck wow blint mm-hmm. look at how short you are next to her actually you might be the same height how tall are you i think we've been saying he's like seven foot oh yeah mm-hmm. they're like eight foot easy fuck Oof. um and but she like waves at you and hey hi um he's very obviously upset someone's taller than him <laughs> <laughs> he's now looking at, at this person directly in the eyes like hey what's up <laughs> Hey, um, I'm just gonna heal some people, but uh, we should chat if you're friends with uh, with Glitch here. Glitch, my old buddy. <laughs> We're we are most certainly friends. We're best <laughs> friends. He's my hero. <laughs> oh, that's, that always <laughs> makes me so happy. Um, and uh, I. Do but he we, goes. Do we he puts on? his hand down. He goes. But he only has room for one tall friend. <laughs> so she, back she off. She puts her hands up. She's like, okay, okay. <laughs> um, Isaac, do you you descend the stairs? Yeah. And uh, you, how I mean, I wait for, like, medical people to come. Oh, yeah, they're, they're up there now, grabbing and bringing him down. But, you yeah. And, you and Sora are walking down with him. I'd say I just, like, slowly descend the stairs, like, behind, like, the group of, like, healers, because I'm, I'm just, like, 
I don't know, hanging back. Isaac, like, does that sometimes. And you look, uh, on the floor, right in front of the elevator is Cromwell manacled, looking not like himself. This, like, thin, sallow individual. And with that, we will uh, do a little little skip, a little time jump, if, we're, if everyone's cool with that. Um, <laughs> well, actually... Where would you guys go if you were given, like, f- like after this? I assume the Eye of the Villa. But yeah, probably. That's Just to, what, like, go chill. Yeah. So I assume you guys went back to the Eye of the Villa, um, to- like, regaled Orem with the story of everything. He was thoroughly shocked by just what... Ha- like, he's like, this has been a day. It's been one day. <laughs> and you guys just are heroes now what's what's with that i walked through the desert all the way to get here and then i met blint and then we met isaac and then we went through the sewers and there was this frog wizard and we beat up cats and i I almost killed a bear but then i brought her back because she's a sweetheart and then um blint saved me at one point and then uh there was like this evil knight dude with a huge sword and like he didn't fight me and then we came here and we were plumbers and and then and then there was the fight in the the ballroom and then cromwell died and his soul left his body it was crazy (laughs) Um, also cromwell's not dead (gasps) he's he's at one hp (laughs) studio audience (gasps) you get a sending spell that says cromwell has been apprehended and is awaiting trial I thought Cromo was dead. <laughs> should be. <laughs> should be fucking dead. He should be fucking dead. Um, and uh, you guys spend that night, that following night, uh, in the eye of the villa, and you guys see almost like just instantly there is, uh, there has been a public showing of all the people who have, are being tried for treason. Um, there are all the vigilant whelps that survived. As well as Norm and some elite Crescent Guard that weren't in the guardhouse that night. Um, and you can almost, with cert- like with almost all certainty, uh, assume that everyone in the guardhouse was not in on it. Um, and uh, <laughs> you see uh, Ezra there, the drow holy woman who healed you guys in the thing. They're like uh, in the <coughs> Church of the Key Close. And... Uh, Cromwell is not present because he probably can't walk, you assume. Yeah. Um, th- but they're parading them through town. Everyone's throwing, like, tomatoes and shit at them. <laughs> like, garbage. Boo, boo, tomato, and tomato. Boo. <laughs> and they're just kind of, like, parading them as, like, this is what happens when you commit treason and blow a hole in the fucking tower. Um, and you, uh, there's no public ex- execution. That's not the Sora Athelian way. But they're paraded from uh, the Red Maple District all the way around uh, Crescent City back to the Red Maple District. I've never been to a parade before. This is exciting. (laughs) You're just watching like people get like like there's a fully a dude with like pissing on the people as they go by. (laughs) I'm eating popcorn. Take that that shit, treasons. Treasons. (laughs) You treasons. You treasons. Are we all outside watching it? Yeah, you guys just uh, exited the eye of the villa. Glenn picks up like a loose rock and just like chucks it at like one of the people. <laughs> yeah. You you chuck it's like, it at, fucker You chuck it at a vigilant <laughs> and he just like you just watches like blood trickles down his head and he's just like he's this like younger like kid who not kid, but he's like like our age, like it's in a his child. early twenties and he's like fucking basically just it's 11 year old yeah it's this little 11 year old kid <laughs> i miss and hit a kid <laughs> <laughs> it goes past the parade and hits someone else. it hits an onlooker who's an 11 year old child um you see Boom. uh the Beazel family is outside um they were like you know that they like make a daily commute to the church and are now like this is their daily commute and they're just seeing this like Oh, what the hell happened here? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Are they from Minnesota? I don't know what I don't remember what their original voices <laughs> are like. That's um, funny. this shit was like two months ago. But uh, 
Pinson's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, now I'm making them super Minnesota. <laughs> from Ontario. This is crazy. What the hell is going on? And they're like, Pinson. <laughs> Leave it to Beasel. <laughs> he looks at the camera. It's a callback. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're probably surprised. They're shocked. They were being monetarily held captive by the church. Yeah, and they, like, you watch as in real time as they piece it together that, like, you know, Ezra's there, Norm's there. Like, these are people we've seen around. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh my God. Mm. Um, you received a, a sending spell from, in that same sending spell about Cromwell being apprehended. Sora uh, said that uh, in, in, like, two weeks, they're gonna have a, uh, a kind of state of the address where they will explain what happened, put them, condemn them to trial, and also appoint you three as heroes of the realm. Oh my goodness. Oh my Holy God. fuck. <laughs> 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 Shit. Um, but until then, you have your own t- two weeks to just do whatever you want. Okay. For the first time in a day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just kind of want to hang out for a little bit, but also, should we possibly um, interrogate Cromwell at some point or another? Hmm. Nah. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of over all that, you know, we're heroes now. Save the day. (laughs) Pretty sick, actually. Yeah, we're we're I kind of like this feeling, actually. You just don't want to follow up on that at all? You just kind of want to, like, let that just be how it is? Well, to be honest, if if uh, this villa that, you're t- that you told me about, if this villa is as strong as they say, I don't think Cromwell was the kingpin of it all. I don't think he was... I mean, he might have relatively been an important piece of the puzzle, but, like... Yeah, but he can, like, tell us who was, like, contacting him and, like... If there was, like, a follow-up, or... Well, I mean, did you see what happened when you asked what the villa was? Oh, yeah, his soul left his body. It was crazy. Also, Glitch, uh, er, yeah, Glitch, There's there was no follow-up. Like, he was supposed to die there. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you could still talk to him if you want. I feel like he might just be catatonic, or whatever the word is. Oh, you mm-hmm. know, that's fair. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just yeah, let it be. that guy, dude. Yeah, let's move on and never think about it again. Honestly, we should be like sharks and never look back. (laughs) I agree. Dirty neck. Sharks don't have necks. Yeah, I also, uh, I'm not the best at looking backwards either, (laughs) physically. (laughs) I think we have more in common that you might know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn. And Blint's like, <laughs> I've never heard you laugh. You, you guys wild. realize this is the first time you've had like a normal conversation in like the whole time you've known each other? <laughs> Literally. Oh my God. <laughs> like a casual conversation. I yeah, expected. so like, what's your favorite color? We're sitting on the patio <laughs> outside of the fucking eye of. Is it called the eye of the villa? Yep. <laughs> What'd you say? Well, I said, what's your favorite color? Beige. Mm. More of a. <laughs> we are unimpressed with the favorite color. <laughs> I'm more of like a turquoise guy. If the uh, if you guys like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> I don't have any particularly strong feelings about turquoise. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't really like it that much either. Actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Be- uh, but beige is cool. Uh, I I agree with that. Beige actually, beige is really I, cool. Actually. I think beige is very cool. Yeah. What about you, Glitch? What's your favorite color? My favorite color? Thank you for asking. <laughs> My favorite color is blue. Okay. <laughs> That's. Yeah, I'm really ha- I'm happy about that for you. Really? Um. I think so. So anyways, do you think that I could talk to some of the people in the castle and they'd be, like, cool with it? Oh, yeah. 100%. Because, I like, mean, we're heroes and everything now. Yeah. I mean, I was already on the inside before, but now we're heroes, so, like, 
we fucking pretty much own this place. Yeah, why did you leave? Oh, you know, let's not get into that. It's not really important. You watch as Dariq made it out. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, it feels so good to get some fresh air. <laughs> Isaac, buddy! Holy shit! This is the cool digs, man. Cool digs. Uh, is this your friend? Best friend, if that, dude. What's up? I'm I'm Dariq, and he puts his his glitches well glaring hand in. at him after he says best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking uh, like this guy. He was an old work acquaintance. His hand's still out. I'm getting the feeling you don't like him. No. <laughs> He says l loud enough for him to hear. <laughs> I hold my hand out for Dariq to kiss it. <laughs> he does. He slobbers on it. <laughs> Ew, you have way too much chapstick on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just like... So I, full, really, like... I really lathered that shit on. <laughs> Sand is slimy. <laughs> it's just lathered in grease. Yeah, we're... My name's Glitch, and this is Blint, and we're Isaac's best friends. Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, like, we know him very well. All right. Tell him. Tell What's him, his favorite Isaac? color? Beige. Beige. That's what I said. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't say what anything. I said it the first thing I showed up. <laughs> Did you even think of that? <laughs> when I walked up here, I said beige. You guys didn't even hear me. Blint steps in front of everyone. He goes, "We try to do, bro." Hmm. I'm just his homie. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting very frat boy upset. And he like, who do you know? Fully here? changes the conversation. He's like, "So, heroes of the realm, huh?" It's pretty wild, that old Cromwell thing, huh? Yeah, it's no big and deal. Oh, yeah, where back. were you? I was there. <laughs> where? I, I played the jig and everything, man. Oh, yeah, I saw that, but, like... I definitely... You should hit the I fan. was there, bro. Where were you? Did you help out? Dog. Helped out Cromwell? No, I mean, like, helped out with the fight. No. No. <laughs> I had to protect the Lavender Band, dude. Those guys, those guys are my homies. Like, they were gonna... Get under fire. We were like right next to those crossbowmen. Mm. And what did they do? Uh, they were being protected by me. Yeah, why don't you go see what they're up to? <laughs> you want to fuck right. off? Yo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just skip that. Uh, I'm going to be around town getting used to this this whole joint. If you guys want to like show me the way, I would love to hear like your favorite spots, Isaac. Like I'm trying to. I'll show you where to go. Oh, to yeah. We're actually kind of sure. busy for like the next two weeks. So. That's chill. <laughs> Cool, and he's like slapping his thighs. He's like, "All right, um, sick catching up, bro. Uh, hit my sending stone. You know where it is. <laughs> Appreciate you, dog. All right, uh, peace." And he, he like does the thing where he looks around, the kind of like he didn't expect to get this far, and just like <laughs> dips off towards the Willow District. <laughs> Bye, Eric. Calls <laughs> <laughs> in the wrong name. I hate that guy. Isaac calmly stands up after finishing his uh, wine in a in a little tea glass. <laughs> <laughs> he just whips the glass on the ground. <laughs> oh, I fucking hate that guy. Yeah, that dude sucked. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Loves matcha. <laughs> fucking loves matcha. Dumb he, fuck. He really tried to test us by asking what your favorite color when it's obviously beige, and we've known that for longer. It's very than just clearly the last couple beige. Minutes. Literally, like only your obviously. best friends would know that. Like, look at me, of course it's beige. And there's Stupid no fuck. way he knew that, because that's something you only tell your best friends. <laughs> yeah. And he's not one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Blint leans back and, like, a wooden chair just falls completely to the ground. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, anyway. And, and on that, uh, well, where, where's everybody going for these two weeks? We're going to kind of get macro about it. We're not going to do day by day. Or, we're going to do day by day, but it's going to be like, what did you do for that day? We're doing downtime. Shit. Do you guys want to... Let's roll a d4. Let's see who goes. I got four. Four? I got a one. I got three. Well, shit. Looks like Isaac's starting us off. <laughs> All right. I think the first thing I'm going to do... Um, day one. Day one. I think Isaac is kind of just being lazy. And, like... He's not just hanging out, but he, like, pretty much does nothing besides this, like, one thing. Yeah. Uh, he goes and finds Glitch wherever Glitch is, and, uh, he brings Glitch up to, uh, like, Sora's meeting room. Okay. Somewhere Yeah, like she that. has, like, this, like, fucking super cool, uh, meeting room up, <laughs> like, on the, the top floor, where you can, like, see, look out on all of Crescent City, and there's, like, it's kind of like the, uh, the war room, but she doesn't go to war, so. Mm-hmm. 
Isaac uh, walks into the room happily with a uh, big ass picture frame under his arm that's covered in like a cloth. He's like, all right, Sora, I've brought Glitch here with me, and I think I have a surprise that both of you would like very much. Um, and when you when you walk into the room, this beautiful, like, resplendent uh, room, it's got a bunch of, like, red curtains everywhere on the windows, and this, like, huge stone table with, like, a map of Ismunda on it. And uh, you see over the map is Oberyn um, in this kind of, like, uh, like he's like a fucking i don't want to say kimono like a bathrobe like a silk bathrobe like what isaac was wearing at first Mm -hmm. um and like this huge uh gauze underneath it um he's standing and talking and being there still protecting his mom Mm -hmm. um and uh like it's him sora hugo and tulip Mm -hmm. all there just having a conversation so you you bring glitch in and Glitch throws his arms up, and he's like, Tulip! <laughs> and she picks you up, <laughs> and she, like, spins you around. <laughs> like, oh. She's like, how's it going, little buddy? What's up, Tulip? You know, not much. What uh, what, what do you guys got? Hey, Tulip. Hey, uh, Hugo. Hey, Oberyn. I'm yeah, glad you're all here. Some exciting things I found in uh, Lord Jezebel, whatever the fuck his name was. Taverin. Uh, I know. I purposely oh. am saying <laughs> the wrong name. Gotcha. Uh... While we were making our way through his house, we didn't break in or anything, um, I happened to stumble into his office on accident. And Oberyn I, is smiling, like trying not to laugh. And I accidentally um, took a few maps, but this one in particular might be of interest. And I lay it flat down, and I unsheath the cloak. And it's... Uh, the original plans to Anathema. Yeah, and Sora, <gasps> like, her eyes go wide. And yeah, her and Glitch both, just, like, <gasps> and she's like, Isaac, you, I mean, we were going to ransack his house as soon as we found <laughs> out he had committed treason, but I don't know if we, the Crescent God would have found this. This is Oh, invaluable. no, they definitely wouldn't have. It's uh, it was home. in a very secret compartment. And she, like, uh, she, like, Wipes her thumb over the like, uh, it's like covered in glass, but over the signature of Rory and Athelion, and she's like, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen my brother. Things didn't end on great terms, so to have a little piece of him here is wonderful. And thank you. And she like holds your hand, like grabs your hand, and, like squeezes it course it was my pleasure um and she like she uh like kneels down to glitch and is like it's actually perfect that you two are here because remember that man i talked about fixing the boat or your ship sorry yes um this is him and she like points to uh (laughs) hugo moonscar who's in this like explorers like indiana leather jacket (laughs) um with like like a fur collar yeah and uh he's like this big bald goliath guy with like a like a nice little like goatee and uh he stands at this like like even taller than tulip is like eight and eight one (laughs) like fucking he looks down at you glitch and he goes well hello there Hi, my name's Glitch. My name's Hugo Moonscar. And he puts it, he like palms your head like a basketball. <laughs> He's like, wonderful to meet you. Um, well, uh. I just hold my hands out to like get him to give me knuckles. <laughs> he gives you knuckles. And he's like, you are a magnificent person. You know that. Thank you. You're magnificent as well. Oh, shucks. Well. You're the tallest person I've ever met. We're going to have a lot to work on together, I, I assume. I don't love going near uh, Carithuan, some bad business over there, but we uh, should have some one-on-one time. Okay. Can you teach me how you got so tall? Um, genetics, my friend. <laughs> nice. And he, like, laughs and, like, smacks your back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, uh... What's the move, Isaac? So you you presented this with you presented her with this. Sora kind of takes you aside after a uh, Hugo, Tulip, and Glitch kind of uh, leave the room. Um, you see Tulip and Hugo are kind of like in a in a mixture of like hospitality and friendship, like leading Glitch around, mm-hmm. introducing him and like getting to know him. Yeah. They're kind of like 
they're they're uh, of inquisitive mind so they're like kind of studying him, studying him while also being like well, holy shit this guy's cool mm-hmm. um but you would now have a moment alone with uh sora and oberon kind of leaves the room <laughs> and <laughs> um oh yeah and Sora <laughs> Isaac's doing the body body roll. rolls against the door <laughs> as, she, as she's like as she's like sending over and off it's like yeah. you're back there like <laughs> she's air humping yeah. no um, I, I don't do that <laughs> okay <laughs> um, uh, but she sends over and off, closes the door, and uh, grabs your hands in hers, and she goes, Isaac, there were things I never got to talk to you about when you were here, because they never felt like a good time. And now every time feels like a good time. <laughs> to just... There were things I wanted to talk to you about. And you can see she's kind of like stalling. Yeah. <laughs> she's like... You know I've had a hard time ever since Jesra left. Um, hard time connecting with people in the same way. My trust was way too thin. Um, but you helped me build that back up. And now you're bringing gifts and you're becoming a hero. Um, really showed me that we did hold you back here. The 11 years you spent here were invaluable to me and I believe we should talk about someone I never felt it right do you you can go I don't oh no I, I have I don't know who you're talking about I never felt it right to bring it up to you but that day that you weren't there for your friend I assume I must admit it's kept me up at night, um, sentencing him in the way I had to. And I knew there must have been a good reason for you not to be there. But I need to hear it from you. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, um, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know why I didn't go. She nods her head and she goes, I didn't want to bring up anything sore. I just know. It's been on my mind a lot lately, ever since you left and I didn't get to ask you. You know, law the law of the Hall of Penance is if there is no person to speak on your behalf, you will receive the sentence that you are blanket given by your crime. I heard him call for you, and I thought at first maybe he wasn't your friend. Um, Maybe he was just throwing out a name. Were you too close? Um, We worked together for a while. Mm. Ended poorly? Things like that usually fall apart. (laughs) Mm. So we don't need to keep talking about it. I just wanted to clear it up a little bit and tell you that I'm sorry for sentencing him if he was close to you. (laughs) Um, It's it's your duty. Uh, Nothing to be mad about. I just know it must have been hard. And we didn't talk about it, and we kind of just acted like it didn't happen. So I, for years, for three years now, so I, it's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, but it doesn't change what you've done for me, or what you've done for this city. I, I'm in your debt. <laughs> for multiple things. <laughs> well, don't, don't worry, I won't. Won't hold it over you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate uh, that. Um, would you maybe want to go for a walk? Yes, of course. Maybe by the Shimmer Lake? 
this. We'll, uh, we'll be okay. We'll be safe. Of course. And yeah, you guys spend <laughs> that night. Uh, for some reason, she gets very light guard duty. And uh, somehow they let Oberyn <laughs> Yeah, after happen. an attempted yeah. assassination. <laughs> um, Oberyn watches like a fucking hawk. Uh, over her as you guys walk amongst the the uh, closest part of the Shimmer Lake to the castle. And you guys just watch this beautiful lake that almost looks like uh, the like sun dances off of it in this like golden sheen, hence Shimmer Lake, um, with these like crystal clear waters. And it's beautiful. Um, is that the end of night one? Yeah. What does Isaac do for the remainder of his downtime? So I think the plan for Isaac, uh, after getting the books, I f- and you know all the events that happened in that night, yeah, just kind of uh, made Isaac interested in you know the interworkings of magic since. You know, he kind of shook the dust off of his gears and started feeling, like, powerful again after, you know, becoming the hero of the realm. Yeah. Uh, I think he kind of thinks he's smarter than he is. (laughs) Yeah. And begins, like, (laughs) throwing caution to the wind and just, like, diving into these books. Um... and if I can, I'd like to uh, look into Quentin's okay. records. Um, okay, so you will probably be spending most of your two weeks in uh, the spire that is dedicated as a library. Yeah. And also houses the records uh, okay. for Crescent City. Um, and we'll pick up on you after Blint. So, uh, day one, Isaac and Glitch run, go off to the Silver Spire's what is what does Blint's day one look like? I feel like day one he's <laughs> gonna stay at the uh, eye of the villa, just getting belligerently drunk. <laughs> okay, so you. Uh, but he'll do. I'll do something different after like the initial day. Okay. But I feel like since he like came to the city to like, what did I keep saying like for the vibes or whatever? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to see what the vibes were. About. <laughs> he's getting belligerently drunk and just like walking around. So you uh, Ooh, very get- visibly hammered, just um, like. <laughs> day one you you maybe get like a couple hours into drinking orm is obviously giving you unlimited drinks because like he just enjoys you your guys's company yeah. um you're kind of the first good thing to happen to this bar um <laughs> and you the door poof, slams open to one of the rooms and uh fucking superman style like uh mm-hmm. fists on the the hips is like what the fuck's up buddy <laughs> <laughs> Is Blint like awake at this point? Yeah, you're you're just in like a fucking drunken hole. Like you are like, you are uh, sloshed. And he's uh, like, Dad, you started without me. Uh, grudge? It's grudgy, yeah. baby. Come here. And he like he like has his little hand on your back, your furry back. I just like scoop him up in my arms like a child and I just like squeeze him really like too hard. He like wraps his little arms around the back of your head and like, <laughs> like tussling your hair. And he's like, "How's it going, buddy? You were the vibes were weird yesterday. Like, are you good?" <laughs> I keep forgetting it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like weeks of time. I, I did feel <laughs> literally. Little, I feel like I put you guys out um, by being like, "Hey, yo, take me to the fucking take me to Entropica or yeah, fair fair nose in my bed." Yeah. Um. How do I put this so delicately? That's. <laughs> You wouldn't want what we're doing. No? Hell no. You you're you're a smart guy, Crud. You you don't want to get involved. We had a we've been just murdering things and No shit. I mean it's really hard cuz now we're like heroes of the city, blah blah blah, but you know and it's, you say it's that, not all glitz and glamour. You say heroes of the city and all the like the couple people like in the bar at daytime and Orem <laughs> raise their their fucking pints so like heroes of the city. <laughs> and I will have a drink. I look back I'm like see it's like oh god it's so <laughs> <laughs> You don't you just you just want to go to college and get your education. This is like this isn't the life for you. And it's, you're watching crudge like his eyes are darting back and forth like the the like mathematic meme of like he's figuring <laughs> it out and he's like yo 
You guys could you could be my recommendation now. Okay. Would you want to do that? Yeah. If, do, like, they, do they give a shit about, you know, just the most heroic people in the city? I mean, it's... I would think so. Like, I mean, I could only hope that they would. Uh, I would imagine they've heard yeah, of us by now. By but, now. you know, it's all in a day's work. I don't expect everyone to know who we are, but <laughs> I assume they do. Maybe. If they're informed. And, um, uh, Orm's like, he's being bashful. Everybody knows who these fuckers are. Like, this is... It, oh, stop. I mean, there was a parade. You slept through that. Er, I'm doing crudge. <laughs> there was a parade. You slept through it, Crudge. And he was like, no shit, I did. I, I fuck, you guys had a parade? Uh, there was a pretty big parade, <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's nuts. You guys like that uh, one. I mean, it wasn't that. Yeah. I mean. It was only the whole city was too there. too humble, bro. <laughs> if that was me, I would be like, I would be a menace. Yeah. <laughs> It's it just... would be everyone's fucking problem that I am a hero. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's what I'm a- a- angling towards. Uh, I mean, it's been hard. You know, there's just women and children coming up to me. It's, you it's, shine in their heads and shit. Yeah, it's just been like a burden. These women, you know, they come in my room, different girl every night. <laughs> it's just been... Holy lion. Yeah, none of this happened. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> he's like, yo, you might be on very geese radar now. I might put you in one of his brochures, bro. If if Gary V <laughs> if Gary <laughs> Gee finds out who I am, I think this whole journey will be complete. Shit. Can but, I be like your manager? Yeah, I mean I'm sure now that I'm like a hero of the city, me and my friends will have to do a lot of like appearances oh, and Yo, okay, you get me into to SU, okay? And then I operate here whenever you guys go off. Cause I'm sure like heroes are gonna go off. I operate here as kind of like a like a campaign to get you guys more known and like we'll do t shirts, we'll do like <laughs> like branding. You guys will be like they'll be like fucking tankards with your name on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's and definitely important we, we get some the merch profit, going. Like forty sixty me. Yeah, probably like seventy thirty us, but um Yeah, yeah like eighty twenty me. Yeah, know? yeah, probably like yeah, we'll just iron out the numbers at another time, but, uh, yeah, we should probably get some merch going. I mean, the city, I mean, look around. These people, There's a bunch of, like, sad drunk people in the daytime. how much they love me. <laughs> There's a bunch of, like, uninterested drunk people <laughs> in the daytime. <laughs> Day drinking. Yeah. Um, and you watch as, uh, walking into the bar is that guy that Crudge swindled yesterday. Oh, with the flower yeah, thing? Yeah, with the yeah. flower thing. He walks up to uh, the bar, like, next to you guys, nods at you, uh-huh. looks at, like, eyes crudge for a second, and then, like, talks to Orm, and he's like, Right, so, uh, you know, there was a floral festival yesterday, right? And Orm's like, um, I don't quite, I don't quite recall that. And he's like, yeah, neither did I, because I didn't get any fucking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> He's really upset. And then he looks at looks at Crudge and he goes, "I love flowers, and you made it so I couldn't get any. You little pint, you little half wit bitch." <laughs> and and then he like he fucking takes a stool, oh my god, breaks it over the bar so that he has like two fucking sticks, <laughs> and he goes, "Come on, then, bitch." <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, in this moment, yeah. Shits in slow mo. He's pulling up like past you, like he's like going over you to bop Crudge on the head. What does Blint do? Blint just gives a like cartoonish wind up and just uppercuts the guy in the jaw. <laughs> you uppercut the guy in the jaw. <laughs> he fucking falls back and he's like, he's like grabbing his chin and he's like, get him, boys! Oh fuck! And uh, like a bunch of dock workers run in that you assume were his pals. Um, yeah. they're all dressed kind of similarly, like in like these like dirty clothes and uh-huh. uh. You are. You don't have your club on you. You don't yeah. have anything. You just have the stool underneath you. Uh-huh. You pick that shit up, and you're like, <laughs> it feels good. Yeah. It feels like there's a good weight to it. There's good distribution, almost like your club. You're like, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> and in this moment, you realize like, anything can be a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that um, is exactly what he feels. Like. <laughs> Crudge is like he's like doing like the fucking rock on thing. He's like defend my honor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you I want to pick him up by the ankles and 
swing them at somebody. <laughs> no, I actually don't. Um, don't. Roll uh, an attack, like roll four different attack rolls. Okay, so you you miss the first two. Wait, do I add anything? Yeah, you add uh whatever your club like plus whatever your club stuff is. Oh, the seven. Um. To each of those. <laughs> seven. To each I forgot of to add that. Okay, oh so, so yeah, six, you... thirteen, eleven, twenty-two, twenty-four. So none of them were below ten, right? No. Okay, so. <laughs> So you just start picking up random like tankards and stool. Like you fully break a stool over this guy's head and he drops to the fucking ground. The dude on the ground who like is grabbing his chin walks up. What do you do out to all of these people? How do you dispatch all of them with like the random weapons? Like hitting them and shit? Yeah, with your tavern brawler shit. So the first dude, I just grab like a fucking like leg of a table. <laughs> and I just smack him upside the head like in his temple it, it rips off like almost way too easy and then he does like a fucking he like spins it around his back and just like baseball swings it at the next guy <laughs> okay and then he grabs like one dude and like bonks his head off the other guy <laughs> fuck yeah very like cartoonishly like boom and you feel like this is like a hidden calling that you have like you're like Oh fuck, I am really good he, at fighting in town. He does the like from the Zach Fox video where he like looks at his hands and starts like <laughs> yeah. laughing. Yeah. He's like <laughs> Um and Crudge is like the Kenny beats of this. He's just like yeah, clapping. Just um and yeah, you fully dispatch all these guys and they like run back out of the, the villa, the ones that can run. <laughs> and then we sit back down at the bar and he's like, So there really was no flower festival or <laughs> Oh fuck no, I made that shit up. I'm surprised that he didn't it took him a day to catch on <laughs> and then Blunt's just like anything can be a weapon he just starts looking around the room <laughs> and anything and as you say anything those words echo out <laughs> um and much like i asked will uh what does blint spend where will blint spend most of his time on downtime um, like the next day yeah the next like two weeks where will he spend most of the majority of his time and what will he be doing? He's going to join some uh, protests against the church. <laughs> okay. And like start like meeting people. Like so, yeah, they're you... going to get involved. Setting in... up meetings in the yeah, city. Yeah, like they're going to like, <laughs> he's going to like uh, jump in the like protester Fuck community. Yeah. The Church of the Pantheon has been like f levied against by the Church of the Key Close. Yeah. So like you're like going with the Church of the Pantheon and like trying to do equal protests to there. Like... Right, yeah. Okay. And you might see some like musicals or something. Fuck yeah. From performances. He's enjoying his time. He's enjoying um, his high art. Okay, yeah, we will get back to Blint in a moment. We are gonna go to Glitch. Um right after the ad reads. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are walking uh, you just left the like council room uh in the main Silver Spire um with uh Hugo and Tulip Moonscar. And Tulip is like Show, like just introducing you to rooms and Hugo's got this like pensive he's like smoking a pipe he's like got this pensive like look on his face like every time you interact with something and Tulip's like so uh where are you from Glitch? I'm from the sky and by that what do you mean? uh like Anathema oh makes sense with the ship thing that they were t that uh Sora was talking about um so you traveled by ship from Anathema yeah, I crashed into the to the planet. And where did you... You said Carathuan, Dad? And he's like, yeah, Carathuan. And um, he, like, walks... He starts walking up closer to you, and he's like, Well, what are you... What are you kind of here to do, friend? Uh, well... I am here to try and find people to help come back to Anathema with me, but... Since I've been down here, I'm kind of getting, I'm starting to enjoy uh, doing like little adventures and getting to know people. So I think I just kind of want to make friends and stuff. Well, you've, you've made a couple with us. Yeah, you guys seem really interesting. Well, thank you. Um, have you ever heard of Guild Wymere? Have I? Um, you said earlier that you didn't. Like, no. in, like, a, like a past episode, you mm. said you haven't. Okay. Um, well, um, 
I'm kind of got a monopoly on the industry up up north. Um, we handle building ships and any inventive technology that is uh, brought out to the masses. That's so, wonderful. So you can help me build my ship or repair it? That's exactly what I was proposing. Awesome. Um, I don't know how soon, because I'll have to bring my... I, I will have to bring the ship back to our sin. Well, um, that's okay. I. It just would uh, be more expedient in the build. And also we could, um, if you don't mind, we'll study uh, the inner workings. Do you, um, who created you? Uh, my father. Um, what's his name, son? Uh, Cragorn. Uh, yeah, Ornthas Krigorn. <laughs> Wait, did you just make that up now? <laughs> no. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ornthas Krigorn. Ornthas Krigorn. Hmm. Can't say I've ever heard of uh, that surname before, but interesting. Um, can you describe him a little bit? Um, well, he's probably as tall as I am. Right. Uh, he's got big glasses. Mm. Um, he's got a big scraggly white beard. Right. Uh, he's got like pale bluish skin. Um, you see his eyes like light up when you say that, like, hmm. He's just the kindest person I've ever met. Wonderful. I I think his uh his kindness shows through you. Oh, thank you. Um Tulip, I'm going to um retire back to my ship. Um I I'm going to head back to our sin. But I will be back in time for the trial. And we can talk more about getting your ship. Uh, and heading back to our sin. Wonderful. It was amazing meeting you. It was wonderful meeting you too, son. And he, like, shakes your little baby hand. <laughs> um, pats you, like, pats you on the head. <laughs> Squeaky. <laughs> and, uh, he, like, hugs Tulip. And he's like, love ya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off. And she waves goodbye. And she's like, well, um, is there anything you want to learn or anything? What do you, what do you, what do you want to do? You what can this... you, what can you teach me? Um... I assume that you don't have the same skill set I do. Um, and she, like, points back to the violin on her back and the bowstring at her hip. Oh, but you do magic, though, right? I do. Um, I'm the court mage here. So you must know, like, a lot about magic then, huh? Yeah, uh, quite a bit, I would say. Um, kind of kind of got my start here uh, from saving old Oberon in a fight. You saved Oberon? Yeah, he was getting uh, in over his head with a bunch of thieves. In over his head? <laughs> and, and just, she laughs way too hard at that. <laughs> and um, she's like, I love a good pun. Jesus. Or, fuck, there's no Jesus in this game. I always say Jesus. <laughs> um, God's above. I love a good pun. Um, Well, uh, yeah, he was getting in over his head with a couple of thieves. <laughs> and, uh, you know, needed a little backup. But I... Uh, Managed to distract them long enough for me to kick their ass. So, like, do you know, like, like magic theory and stuff like that? Um, you see, she is uh, well versed on. Oh, she says, "I'm well versed on bard theory, but um, I'm afraid that you don't seem to classify as such. Uh, do you work? Uh, learn magic from reading tomes? Um, I, I." gain magic from the void so you're you pledged a deal to this void uh, i wouldn't say i pledged a deal i kind of um worship's kind of a strong word worship i mean no that's the that's actually that ha helps me out a lot um i think i know some people in town that could help and we could work together to uh kind of see what suits you the best if you're cool with that yeah that's fine i just i'm i'm just kind of curious like i have uh, this thing inside me, and uh, I was just wondering if you could, like, help me figure it out, because I don't fully understand it myself. And that would be what? Uh, I know what it's called, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, like, my soul core. It kind of, uh, it's, for lack of a better term, it it's kind of like my engine, or like what you mortal folk call a heart, I think, maybe? Mm. Or, well, I guess... It's an engine's a better word. Does it require fuel to burn? Uh, I don't think so necessarily, because I don't need to like eat or sleep like people do. 
And I don't really have like a, a an energy source. Like I don't really run out of energy, you know what I mean? Yeah, which is good, because that would be interesting. Um, huh. Very, very interesting. I'm just curious because I know that I'm supposed to like adapt and become better at stuff, but like I feel like I'm starting to experience things that aren't necessarily in line with like my normal perception of reality around me. And I was just hoping that I could find somebody who could explain it to me better. Well, you're in luck. Uh, uh, along the way, my dad has met some, uh, some of the biggest minds of magic theory and uh, tinkering and invention. I'm merely uh, a novice at tinkering. I'm more a musician, an artist. But... Um, I could take a look at you. Uh, I've learned a thing or two growing up. Kind of had to... I've been my own automatons. Nothing like you. But... Yeah, I mean, I could hook you up with a couple of people outside of the city who really understand kind of building. And my father, of course, is good with it. But he's a busy man. Well, that would just be dandy. Yeah, um... What do you say we get you to my other contact that might help you better with the, uh, awareness aspect? That's perfect. And she, you guys exit the, uh, Silver Spires to the Red Maple District, crossing the bridge that Isaac crossed, uh, only a day ago, um, into the main kind of thoroughfare, past the churches, where you see, uh, Blint, like, kind of talking to a couple people, um... <laughs> and uh, you make it to the beginning of town where uh, you look to your left, um, kind of uh, right above the Willow District, right before the Willow District, you see the Order of the Ashen Moon, this church that you passed the first day and talked to the big orc guy, mm -hmm. and you healed his scar. Um, they're not training outside today, but Tulip walks up and he goes, you gotta meet Bex. He's one of the best people I've known as far as uh, kind of being in tune with oneself. And I think maybe he can help you learn a two thing or two about your internal programming. That's amazing. I love meeting new people. And uh, she like smiles at you and you guys, well, uh, she knocks on these big red doors in this like kind of pantheon looking building. And uh, <laughs> you, the person that opens the door is that orc guy. Uh, and she goes, Bex! How's it going? I know you. He said, I know you. What's up, little one? What's going on? I dab him up. <laughs> and uh, he dabs you up with his big orc hand. <laughs> and he's like, this little guy, he, and look, Tulip, Tulip, look. And he like points to like the scars that have like healed over with like that kind of like ceramic look to it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh my, Bex, God's above. Look at, look at this. You did this glitch? Yeah, I just kind of like healed his face. Well, I mean... Yeah, you were in the right place. Um, this uh, lovely gentleman uh, wants to learn more about himself. And Bex goes, Well, here at the Order of the Ash and Moon, we kind of have to become in tune with ourselves. Um, I like that. Oh, Delilah. And uh, you see uh, this, like, looking very similar to the cats that you fought yesterday, uh, kind of, like, slowly walks in like a tiger, kind of marking their territory. Uh, not marking their territory. <laughs> they kind it's of wander. Yeah, everywhere. it's pissing. Um, <laughs> you, this tiger or this Hellcat like pisses just a little, and he's like, "Delilah, God, come on!" And um, she's just like, Row. and like this big ass fucking tiger-sized cat like peeks his head out the door, and then looks up at you, goes like big, uh, puss in boots eyes, and then mm -hmm. starts rubbing on your leg. <gasps> I start scratching her head, and she's like, "You're so cute." And she's purring so fucking loud and, like, deep. And you're just, like, scratching her head and goes, This is Delilah. She's, uh, you know, my, uh, my familiar, I guess. But I feel like I'm more her familiar. Um, come. And, uh, they, like, uh, Bex takes Delilah and you guys go out to where they were training the day before. And, uh, fucking Tulip kind of says, like, All right, show me what you got. Me? Yeah, and, like, points to, like, a dummy. Uh, uh. Like a straw dummy that's there. And like uh, Delilah is just like laying on the grass underneath a tree. 
and Bex is just like sitting, like uh, leaning on like his big ass fucking uh, long sword that he has, like tilted at the ground. What do you do? Do you want me to just like attack it? Like, uh, show me the craziest thing that you can do. The craziest thing that I could do. Um, <laughs> and Bex is like, yeah, I want to see you go ape shit on this thing. Uh huh. You really put me on the spot here, but I, I yeah, think no I rush. I, um, hmm. What is the craziest thing I could do? Drink like two gallons of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Just shooting milk out <laughs> and not throw up. How many gallons of milk do you have? <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of for the recruits, you know. I don't want to rob them of their resources. Do some magic. Uh, I'm going to summon, um, like my spiritual weapon. Uh, I know I described it as a sword before, mm -hmm. uh, but it's changed into, like, a scythe. Fuck yeah. Like, it looks like a moon scythe. Love that. Um, and then I, like, grab it with my hand, and I blink behind the, <laughs> the dummy, and I just fucking, like, chop its head off. And it just fucking... <laughs> Like, it looks like, like, they blink, and you are behind it, and just instant transmission, just, mm -hmm. and they're like, <laughs> and Tulip's like, wow, okay, we can work with this. Um, I noticed, when you did that, your, like, your aura changed. It did? Yeah, I don't believe it's perceptible by the normal eye, and then Bex is like, yeah, uh, you... You had this weird, like, mist coming off you that almost looked like this black, ethereal kind of void. Um, did you feel anything different inside of you? I don't know. And she, like, explains the soul core to him. He's like, did you feel that weighing on your core at all? When I casted my magic? Yes. Uh, not, not anything different than I normally feel. Interesting. Hmm. This one's different, Tulip. Um, we will need to train some more if you're cool with that. Absolutely. That's what I'm here you, for. Show you some techniques. That's perfect. And he, like, flips his sword up and it, like, lights in, like, a holy kind of, like, flame. Like, this fucking, like, black flame. And he's like, let's get to it. Hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, uh, what is what does Glitch spend his two weeks doing? Where will he be? Will he be posted up here mostly? Pretty much, yeah. I think he wants to, like, do, like, some, like, act, like, m metaphorically and also literally soul-searching. I love that. Like, trying to, like, learn more about himself and also the soul core. Um, and basically just trying to, like, hone his magic skills and just become more, like, uh, battle-ready. Fuck you. Yeah. Okay. So I was fucking this Italian broad. <laughs> and I says, hey. So she comes over and says, let me get a look at that hog of yours. What did she say? So she says, let me see that fat little dick. <laughs> hey. no, let me see that little gargoyle. She said, <laughs> let me she shoot said, a little cannoli. Let me dust the. <laughs> let me <laughs> knock the dust off that little sausage. <laughs> she says, oh, "Let me get a look at the brajo." I said, "Oh, you want a piece of this? <laughs> hey, let me peel back the brajudo. <laughs> peel back the brajudo. A little mozzarella. Let me shake it a bacon. You know what I mean? She wants um, to sprinkle a little parmesan on my brajo." <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I, don't like, how, uh, I don't know how we segue back into There's like an the Italian Indian word they use for like it means like your dick, but it's like a made it actually isn't Is it Brazil? That thing? No, it starts with like a P. Uh it was in uh Chris and Sal's podcast. They talked about it for like ten minutes and he's like, Is that an actual word? And they looked it up and it's just like a slang made up Italian word that like is not an actual word. Bijaja. P pizza? P yeah, it's pizza. <laughs> yeah. That isn't Pizza's real. It's pepperoni. Real.